Hi guys and welcome back to the next in the series looking at financial markets. So this is specifically for those of you who are doing A-level economics and in the previous video we considered bank bailouts, systemic risk and contagion and today we're going to have a little think about regulation in the financial markets. So focusing specifically on UK regulation. Now before I get into the sort of the, the main um, organisations which look after regulation within the UK banking system, financial system, let me just point you towards a couple of resources which might be useful to you and give you one or two quotes uh, which I've given to my students which I think might prove useful should an exam question come up on this particular topic. So if you go to my Twitter feed, which is G underscore economics, you will see that a few days ago, I can't remember, it was maybe last week or maybe on Monday of this week, I referenced a document which was produced by the University of Warwick. Now there's all sorts of really useful, insightful information in there, and I've just lifted um, a few sections of that. So I just want to quote, really, to start with, just want to quote uh, from that document for you. And it says this, it says, we regulate finance over and above the way we regulate other industries because finance exhibits market failures that can have devastating consequences. And of course, we have seen, witnessed, lived through the devastating consequences of the financial crash 2007-2008. Now, a contributor to uh, this resource uh, from the University of Work uh, by the name of Mark Taylor, he says that, quote unquote, financial markets are remarkably adept, remarkably ad adept at circumventing regulation. So they need to be regulated in a very tough manner because they're so adept at getting around and uh, finding sort of little loopholes in the way in which they operate, that they can get around this regulation. Um, and of course, an important function, and this is where the problem arises, I guess, and it talks about this in this document, an important function of financial regulation is to balance the interests of unsophisticated consumers with sophisticated sellers. So, in your studies of economics, you will no doubt have encountered this whole notion of Akerlof's lemons, for example, or asymmetric information, and you can apply that type of market failure to the problem that arises within the financial markets, and as a consequence, the reason why the financial markets have to be regulated in such a fashion. And the so, sort of the final sort of thing that I would glean from this particular document that I was looking at is the whole notion of the way in which banks they need one another and, and they give a great example, a very straightforward but very powerful example in this document because they say that, as you know, banks they borrow and lend to one another day in, day out. So A lends, bank A lends to bank B and vice versa. Well, if you consider two shoe shops on your high street, they don't borrow and lend from one another. And the other thing is that if one of the shoe shops goes bust and closes, then that's actually good news for the other shoe shop because it reduces competition and therefore uh, market share moves from uh, two shops in effect to one. And so there's that whole ability to exploit monopoly power, etc. etc. But of course, that's not so in banking. If we have two banks borrowing and lending from one another and one of them goes bust, that's not good news for either because they need one another. So there's this whole notion really of a social, there's a kind of a social externality in that they, they both need one another. So it's a great document that and I would encourage you to, to take a look at it. So now let's get stuck into just considering the, the regulators and the organisations which regulate within the UK. So Firstly, we've got, uh, and you'll know obviously, so we've got the Bank of England, we've got the Monetary Policy Committee, um, where we've got nine, a team of nine, eight men, one woman, as you'll know, those of you who have looked at that and the composition of that. But we've got the, also then we've got the FPC, which is the Financial Policy Committee. We've got the PRA, which is the Prudential Regulation Authority. And we've got the FCA, which is the Financial Conduct Authority. So that's within the UK. 
Then on a more global basis, global wide, we've got the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, and we've got the World Bank. But primarily here today in this video, I'm focusing obviously on UK regulation. So let's consider first of all the role of the FPC, so the Financial Policy Committee, part of the uh, Bank of England. We were lucky here at college to actually welcome Sir John Cunliffe. Uh, to college and he was talking about his role and his work within the Financial Policy Committee but its, its role is as follows to identify, monitor and take action to reduce or remove systemic risks that threaten the financial system as a whole. Now you may or may not know that it publishes a financial stability report and within that report that is looking at all of the potential hazards that are either currently uh, affecting the UK economy, be those domestic or global, but also looking to the future and considering sort of what if worst case scenarios. Um, and obviously Brexit would be one of those instances which is weighing heavily on people's minds at the moment. So it publishes the financial stability report. It also has certain powers, so you will all, be, I'm sure, be aware of the whole notion of counter-cyclical capital buffers, CCCBs, and they allow banks the room for manoeuvre to absorb uh, bad debts, bad loans, basically. And if people are uh, unable to pay their debts, you've got this buffer stock kind of system in place, then you're able to absorb that. Well, the FPC can instruct the commercial banks to either raise those CCCBs or lower them, dependent upon, obviously, the relative stability or instability which is uh, prevalent or forecast within the economy. And it also, it, it, the role of the FPC, I suppose, is to protect the overall, the banking, looking at the system as a whole. And it, there's, a, there's a great quote, I can't remember where this is from exactly, but the, you know, they, they talk about the fact that uncertainty is the new normal and so they're constantly on their guard as to what may or may not happen in the future. So that's the FPC. What about the PRA then, the Prudential Regulation Authority? Prudence, safety. So we're talking about safety within the banking system. The PRA is also a part of the Bank of England. And its primary role is to focus on solvency and the relative stroke solvency or insolvency of the financial markets. Now that could be insurance markets, it could be buy-to-let mortgage markets, but their primary role is to just make sure whether or not there's enough money coming in to cover monies which are going out. And then finally, the Financial Conduct Authority. Now the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, that reports into the Treasury, so government, rather than the Bank of England. And it's actually funded by the, the firms that it regulates, so there is, there is a slight conflict of interest there uh, in that respect. Um, maybe you'd like to maybe reference regulatory capture, which I'm sure you've talked about before in your lessons, whereby the regulator, rather than acting in the interest of the consumer, starts becomes captured, if you will, and starts to act in the interest of the organisation which it is supposed to be regulating. But that's uh, by the by, I suppose, on that. But the FCA has three main objectives, which are as follows. Number one, to protect you and I, the consumer. Now, that could be in terms of PPI, Payment Protection Insurance. I'm sure many of your parents will have had phone calls saying, oh, you're due some compensation due to mis-selling of PPI. So that sort of thing, mis-selling, or to protect us from being exploited from payday lenders, such as Wonga and so on. So that's objective one. Objective two is to look at the integrity of the industry, but specifically the integrity of the people within the industry. And the FCA has obviously got the power to strike you off, as it were. You know, if you were an accountant, you were mis misappropriating funds, you'd be struck off, you could no longer practice. If you're a medic, same sort of thing. And the same thing happens in the financial sector. And then finally, and this is sort of in two parts, I guess. On, the, on one side of the two parts would be to promote contestability and competition. 
Now we've seen that with regard to maybe uh, it's easier for you and I now to, to switch bank accounts, current accounts. So if you're in the Halifax, you wanted to move to Santander. Years ago, that was such an onerous task. People just couldn't be bothered because if you have 25 direct debits, you, you just can't bear the hassle of doing, changing them all over to a new bank. That's all kind of seamlessly done nowadays. Or it could be to allow new challenger banks into the banking sector. Uh, there was a great article in this week's uh, business pages of the Sunday Times all about the Metro Bank, which is a new challenger bank. You young guys and girls, you probably all be using Monzo, for example. Uh, Tom Bloomfield, is it Tom Bloomfield, I think it is. Uh, so these new new challenger banks. And the, the other aspect of the role of this FCI in this instance is to prevent rigging within the system. Now, you'll know that at the time of the financial crash, one of the things that was happening was that LIBOR, the London Interbank Offer Rate, the rate at which banks borrow and lend to and from one another, was being rigged uh, for, for gain, for the, those who were rigging it. And obviously that's not allowed and the Financial Conduct Authority looks at the conduct of uh, people who are managing the LIBOR and they make sure that it's being managed appropriately. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so that's it. And I'm going to leave it there. So. Here in this video we've looked at mark, the financial market regulation um, and in the next video I'm going to consider the role of the Bank of England as a lender of last resort. Bye for now.